Let's be honest, the real estate market in Toronto is incredibly confusing and volatile. While many analysts predict that there will be many more interest rate hikes and that prices will not recover anytime soon, others predict that prices will stabilize and the rate hike will end very soon based on history trend. This is a tale of two stories and let's talk about it, shall we? Hi there, welcome back to AV Team Real Estate. I'm Antonio, a local real estate agent in the GTA, and I post real estate related content every week. If you find it informative and useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell notification so that you can be notified every time the video is up. But more importantly, if you need help, whether buying, selling, or investing in the GTA, don't hesitate to call us or text me with this number right here, or simply book a call with me using the first link in the description down below. So let's address the most common expectation. Most realtors were saying that the interest rate hike would remain the priority for the Bank of Canada to fight against the inflation. And it was confirmed for another 0.75 basis point were announced on September 7 and bring it to the total overnight policy interest rate to 3.25%. However, the key indicators that we would probably expect more interest rate hike in October after the speech from the senior deputy governor Carolyn Rogers discusses where the economy stands and what the bank is doing to get inflation back under control. Over the summer, the consumer price index dropped slightly to 7.6% in July from 8.1% in June. While overall inflation may have peaked, most of the drop was due to gasoline prices Inflation has continued to rise and broaden across goods and services. And globally, we're still seeing supply chain bottlenecks and high commodity prices, both of which contribute to inflation here in Canada. This simply means that although the CPI seems to be dropping but only due to gasoline prices, overall goods and services continue to rise because of the supply chain. Domestically, demand continues to outpace supply. Consumer spending, particularly on services, was robust in the second quarter of 2022. And significant labor shortages persist with the unemployment rate at its lowest level ever. While housing resales and house prices drop from unsustainably high levels, the Canadian economy remains in excess demand, and inflation is more and more broad based. In short, this means that the government is still confident in consumer spending. Labor shortages continue, and the unemployment rate remains at a record low. While housing resale prices drop, that would not be their priority. In other words, they will keep raising interest rate to fight inflation and worry less about the housing price drops. Interest rate increases take time to work. We know that for many Canadians, higher rates add to the burden they already face with high inflation. Still, we need to raise interest rates to bring inflation down. Inflation won't come down overnight. Monetary policy works like a chain reaction or sequence of events, a sequence that takes time. Change to the bank policy rate affect different households and sector of the economy differently and at different speeds. The housing market is one sector where higher rates are felt immediately, but it takes longer for interest rate to bring down price growth on things that aren't directly tied to borrowing. And this section of the article simply confirmed that they will continue to raise interest in the coming announcement because it takes longer to take effect. And because that is their priority over the housing market sector, prices should have room to fall. Since this is coming from the senior deputy governor, I hope this will serve as a quick summary and save you a ton of time from watching other videos or reading other articles to learn why this is such a conservative prediction. As my video suggests, there are always two sides to the story. While this totally makes sense, like everything in life, there is always a counter argument. This is a summary of other videos I recently watched from other realtors who predicted that the housing market will soon bottom based on some historical trends. Let's discuss the rate of absorption. The number of active listings, the unsold unit at the end of the month, is divided by the total number of sales to determine the market absorption rate. When the absorption rate is greater than 1, there is sufficient supply to meet the demand. The greater the number, the greater the supply. If the absorption rates fall below 1, there isn't enough to meet all of the demand. If we take a look at the graph, we see that in 2019 start of the year near 3 and maintaining around the 2 throughout the year. 
In 2020, it started with two and sparked up in a short month in March because of COVID. But then it got way tighter and hovered between 1.6 and 1.5 absorption rate. And in 2021, it basically went below one. Supply was not enough to catch up with the demand. That's exactly why prices went wild up until the peak in 2022 February. We all know that the rate hike started and the supply kept going up after that. From July to August, there is a significant reversal trend that is very, very evident. The supply was suddenly considerably reduced. It was apparent that demand had increased. To truly prove the trend, we must watch for a few more months to further confirm the pattern. Now, let's talk about sales volume. As per market watch from TREP, we know that in August, compared to last year, same month, we finally got a break and had stabilized at 0.9% percentage change. If we go back over the last four years, April usually sees a hot market and that's generally been the case, which is the spring market. In April, things often begin to ease down a little after in April 2020, we could see the first drastic drop since the beginning of COVID. And when compared to this year in 2022, we also see a significant drop in sales volume since the first interest rate hike and the fear of uncertainties due to future rate hike. The summer month will usually slow down in sales since people tend to go out for vacation and pay less attention to real estate while kids are out of school. Usually, real estate will pick up in September as the fall market and as the usual second peak of the year in the fall market because kids are back to school. People go back to work and there's more time for planning. So that is why there is a typical drop about 8 to 10% in sales during July and August. But here is the unusual trend. If you take a look carefully during July and August, the sales volume actually increased by 15%. This pattern could be a reason for people taking advantage of the quieter market and lower prices. Just to be clear, I'm not favoring either side. I'm only presenting the facts and their argument based on their observation. It is up to you to see if it makes sense for you. I am aware that there are a lot of people in the market who consistently claim that it is only natural for realtors to try to convince everyone that the market is good in order to generate more business. However, I believe it to be wholly incorrect. Regardless of the current real estate market, people do need a place for living. And people don't time the market when they go through a divorce or need to move for work or any other reason. The fact of the matter is that not all homes are asset or investment, but necessities. So through a good or bad market, there are going to be transactions. The affected part-time realtor will be the one who had experienced the good times when the market was extremely hot and everything sell anyways. When the market is bad, however, the full-time realtor are the one who go out to the market and help the clients get the most for the sellers and the best deal for the buyers. Meanwhile, the part-time realtor who probably sell a couple of houses a year will be phased out. In fact, there might be more work for realtors who have been in the market for quite some time and have been through the bad times and in return have a bigger market share. Remember, there are opportunities in every single real estate market. Currently, there are many move up buyers that are having a great time. Depending on what are you trying to do, advice really does differ for each person and situation. And for another example, if you are a cash buyer, you are probably really happy right now because you are hunting for deals that didn't exist prior. This probably took longer than usual for this video. If you do enjoy the content, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel to encourage us to keep creating videos just like this. And if you like to chat with me for any real estate related issues, don't hesitate to contact me via this number here or book a call with me via the first link in the description down below. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.